Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome, after a very long time, to an actual tutorial video. So today, we're going to be going over the very basics of building a submarine, just to make sure it actually works and functions, stays under the water, and does everything you expect from a sinking boat. So here we go then, let's get this started straight away. So with the sub, there are a few options you can use to cause it to actually sink and then for you to maintain a certain altitude below the water, a certain depth I should say. So the first option is honestly the most easy but also I would say the least reliable and this is using, if we go to water, the air pumps. Now air pumps do exactly what you would think, they pump a section full of air so if we had a room around this air pump it would indeed start to fill it. So let's just do this and then go around here. Now this is not the method we're going to use, but let's just cover it very, very briefly. There we go. And then we let this cube sink. If we go in the room, here we are. The total available space is, well, it's changing as we go below the water and that's causing us to be buoyant. So as you can see, it's trying to resist sinking. Now this will probably still sink because it's not all that much area. Actually, it might not. Who knows? But the idea is, this allows this area to be filled with air, even though it doesn't look like it, and that allows the area to simply float. So if we wanted to control our depth, all we would need to do is two control blocks, one of them using the... In fact, both of them are going to be using air pumps, and this one will deactivate air pumps if our height above sea slash ground is greater than, let's say minus 20. There we go. So right now it's turned off. Now we should really be sinking, but we're not the heaviest thing. We will now slowly sink. As you can see, we are actually going under finally. It does certainly take a while. Then over here, if we do indeed want to keep it at minus 20, air pumps, activate air pumps if we are indeed below minus 20. And then it's as simple as that. So now air, all of the air pumps within this vehicle will activate if we go below minus 20. If we are above minus 20, however, it will deactivate, causing us to sink. Eventually that would actually happen, but you get the idea. That's pretty much how it works. So it floats when they're on, and then it turns off when necessary. But the problem with that is as soon as you get a hull breach, the entire section gets flooded anyway. So you have to build the hull in a very specific way. I would say this type of thing is a good backup system, not a main system. A lot of the time I don't even use it, honestly, with a sub, but it's a good little backup system, which is at least good for that. The way we're going to do it is by using the PIDs, the general purpose PIDs. A little bit more complex, but generally far more reliable. And even with these, there are two ways of doing it. So the first way, which is the way I'm going to be doing, is this. We have one for roll, down here at the bottom. We have one for pitch, just regular pitch. And then we have one for altitude which is this one here. Now, the other way of doing it is to use altitude hydrofoil and pitch hydrofoil. We won't be using that because I just don't like using hydrofoils very much, except for on boats, because on boats, they can be a lot more simple and a lot easier to use. So you can use those, and honestly, they're, they're very simple. You just use them in the same way. So with the pitch hydrofoil, just leave it as zero, because you don't really want it to pitch up or down, honestly. And if you did want it to pitch to actually control altitude, you can use it by... Where are you? General purpose PIDs, there we are. And then set point to, let's say, minus 10. So it pitches that way. Is minus 10 pitching down? I think it is. And then activate when you're above a certain height. So it pitches down when it's above and then pitches up when it's below. Similar to how we use the air pumps. But instead, we're just going to be using these. So with altitude, we want to be at, let's say, minus 20 again. Minus 20 will indeed be our number for today and test stimulus one. Now it should be noted that the PID system, you can do a lot with this and it is incredibly complex. Down here with the how a PID works, you can see how all of these different things actually affect how the PID acts upon your rotors or your thrusters and such. And you can do 
so much with it, but for the sake of this video, we are going to be just leaving them as they are in their default settings. These are the sort of general purpose settings. They generally don't give you exactly what you want, but they do give you around about what you want, and they work in most situations. I would go into extreme detail, but we would be here all day, even more than that long-winded explanation as to why I'm not going into them. So, we have them set up then. So, we have altitude, pitch, and roll. So, how does that actually affect the craft? Well, to do that, we're going to need some engine power. So, for now, just for the sake of making things easy on myself, we're going to be using an RTG system. There's the RTG. It's very expensive, and it produces energy all by itself. It doesn't require materials or anything else. Then I'm just going to put in some batteries, because batteries are good or so, I've been told. And then we're going to put down an electric engine. There we are. Is that all connected? These two might not be. Yes, they are. Okay, so we have a lot of power. In fact, 3,000 power. And that's all being powered by this. You can see that in the bottom right. So the center of mass is there. So what I'm going to do is just enca uh, encase all of this as my voice dies. I had a bit of a sneezing fit between cuts there, and I swear I had to do every take three times since then, just because my voice completely cracked. So I do apologize if I do sound a little bit odd as I continue talking. Sure, let's just do that. So our box is now turning into a rectangular box. Isn't that just lovely? Okay, so we've skipped a little bit into the future because I wanted to make sure a few things were actually working as intended and they indeed are. So let's explain what I've done in the last five or so minutes. So we have our lovely sub currently pretty much stable in the water and honestly it's really simple what I've done. I've left our lovely PID as they were and we have two over here which are set to roll reverse. These, of course, are the br the boat propellers, if I can actually say the their names correctly, and they are matched up with the center of mass. That is incredibly important for the roll and the pitch thrusters, or the propellers in this case, because if you don't do that, then when the PID tries to use them, it can actually cause a few issues. It's sort of like a weird um, cascading effect. Here on the left here, a weird cascading... Yeah, that's totally what I wanted to say. Well done, me. Over here, of course, we have roll left-hand side. And then on the underside, we have roll and we have roll left and right. So bear in mind that if it's on the right-hand side, it doesn't matter if it's facing up or it's facing down. It just needs to always be roll right-hand side if you want the PID to use it correctly. On the front, we have a couple of propellers here, which are set to nothing. They're just the standard thruster, and these will be used to help the pitch. The same is set at the back, except for at the back, they are, they are of course, thruster reverse. And as you can see, we are pretty stable at minus 20. We go about one high, then one low, and if we go underwater, as you can see, we are pretty much in line with the water. So, yeah, we have our stability pretty much sorted. Now, one thing I will say is that I don't like relying on the PID to control altitude. So, we're going to do something else now because I just don't like it. I really do not like general purpose altitude for subs. So, what I'm going to do, and it's really simple this bit, so I'm just going to do it above the sub to begin with, then, then I'll install it on the underside. This, of course, needs to be in the center of mass. Well, actually, the next part does, so I'll just pop this over here, because I can. And we need two of them. And this will be spin blocks. Set rotation speed to, let's say, 10, if we are indeed at an altitude greater than minus 20. And then the opposite will be set here, so spin blocks... Set rotation speed to minus, uh, let's say minus 2. Uh, honestly, I think 10 may have been a bit too much, but let's just do minus 10 both ways so you can see the effect. It's going to be a bit strong, but hey-ho. Now, this is very similar to building an airship at this stage, but it works both ways, so why not? And this is, if the height is above, wait, no. This should be below. Okay, whoopsie daisy A little bit of confusion there for everyone. If the height is below 20 minus, then the rotor will go up. And then if it is above 20 minus, then of course it will do the opposite. It will 
try to get us lower at all cost. Now, for stability's sake, um, in terms of at least looks, you can have a bit of a gap between them, so maybe one's 25, one is 20, and that just kind of gives it a bit of leeway, but for now, we're just going to do this. So next up, the air and dedicated Hellerblade spinner. These do work just fine underwater. They're absolutely fine to use. As you can see, they're already spinning, so what we're going to do is just do something quite small like this, and then add our rotors. Now these can actually be incredibly small, and I'll show you why in just a second. There we are. So this should hopefully get us to 20. And then after minus 20, they are now pushing down. See these, these white lines here? The two white lines which are perfectly in line with the spinners. When they activate, that's what they do. So these are trying to push down right now. Now, they're not working very well, you may, don't, you may notice. They're not really doing all that much. And the reason is, we haven't activated just this yet. Motor drive. Now, motor drive will massively increase their effect. So when they activate, they are much, much more powerful. And actually, this is a good time to show... Okay, so it looks like, Latherix, you put it as minus 20. Why is it currently perfectly staying at 23.5, 23.6? The reason is, it goes off where the control blocks are, not this stat here. The PID tends to go off these stats, the control blocks do not. Which means right now what's happening is that this block here is at minus 20, but the middle of the ship is actually at minus 23, which is a little bit lower. But as you can see, that is keeping the altitude perfectly. In fact, it may look a little bit shaky because of how powerful it is. Yeah, a little bit powerful, and because I've just added that as well, the um, pitch is also off, you need to add those later. As you can see at the back, these are trying to cause the, the pitch to try and stay where it is, but because of how we've done this, they're just not powerful enough, so you will need to add more thrusters as you do stuff like this, just to ensure that pitch is actually maintained. And actually, you can do this for your pitch as well, so I'm giving you all the different options you can use. So these should be pushing down right now, which they are, and we could make them a lot stronger. They're only on speed 10. If we put them on speed 30, they'll be literally three times as strong, and that would push us underwater a lot faster. So let's do that, shall we? There we go. Also, you may consider doing this always up. That's actually pretty good when you have these in the center of mass like that. Have I done the center of mass? Either way, yeah, we need some more of the propellers if we do this otherwise the pitch is going to be a little bit weird so as you can see now the pitch is actually going too far down at the back so the ones at the front are desperately trying to stabilize us and for the most part they are it's pretty much functional so i'll be right back i'm just going to attach these on the inside of the craft and then i'm going to go ahead and do one more option when it comes to pitch and roll goodbye they kind of flew off a bit faster than i expected so control, automated control blocks, let's go inside, let's put those inside, and then we'll do one more option for roll and pitch, and then that will be the last thing to do before we start allowing this thing to actually move. I'm hoping this is a good way to teach, just showing all the different options you can go with. I'm sorry if it's a bit scatterbrained, I don't really have all the time in the world at the moment to do all the recording stuff, but hopefully it uh, will work out for the best. The blades are now working on the inside, and I've made sure that the control blocks have a very limited range, so they should only be affecting those spin blocks. So next up then, what is the other way to control pitch? And I would honestly recommend having both of these systems. Redundancy is key in this game. Having too many systems all doing the same job will save you a lot of hassle in the future when you're taking damage. It's why things like the Plague Guard can still float and move and work on 20 or 30% health. It's because they have so many systems doing the same job. So, next up, once again, we're just going to be using the spin blocks. So here we are. We have our lovely little spin block here. We don't really need this to be too strong, honestly, especially since the PID is also doing this job, but it does make a nice redundant section. So this will just be with pitch. So if the pitch angle is above zero, because of course we want it to be perfectly flat, if at all possible, then what we want is the spin block to rotate accordingly. I'll just do the one over here as well before I forget to do it correctly, so... Yep, if the pitch angle is greater than zero, if it is less than zero. 
There we are. If the pitch angle is above zero, then try to go down, so minus 30. If the pitch angle is less than zero, try to pitch up, so plus 30. So this spin block is now causing our pitch to constantly alter. And if you would like to know how to bring up this menu here with all those lovely lines, it's just backslash, that's all on your standard keyboard. Although I have heard tell that sometimes the controls are different for people. I believe there are key bindings and stuff in the options. If, and if there's not, just randomly mash buttons while you're in the um, build mode. I'm sure you'll get there eventually. Great advice there, Lathrix. So there we go. Our pitch is now controlled extremely aggressively. So we're going to look like we're rocking horribly. Yeah, we are indeed rocking horribly. So we have pitch being controlled by both the PID and by that spin block. And then for the roll, it's pretty much exactly the same deal. Except for this time, instead of pitch, you simply go with roll angle. So exactly what we just did. So a very short range on the effect range. Then we have the spin block set rotation speed. So if roll, where are you roll? If roll angle is above zero, so I think that would mean it's going like that. I always get this one wrong, so bear with me a second. And then do the opposite next to it. So put this, just put this here for now since I will be throwing these away in a second. I'll just redo this. So spin block, set rotation speed to plus 30, minimal range. If roll is above, is less than is above than zero, right? Is above zero, so now we'll do it for below. And this will be for minus. And let's motor drive that up. And by the looks of things, that is indeed the correct way around. Let's, let's give it some actual ability to affect the thing. There we are. Just making sure that is indeed the correct way when it's on the left-hand side. Now, if you do it on both sides, which I, would, which I would recommend, just remember to do the opposite. So, on the left-hand side, if the roll angle is greater than zero, go up. On the other side, if the roll angle is greater than zero, do minus. And as you can see, once again, it's way too aggressive, which is causing our poor craft to horribly, horribly tilt. But I am going to remove that. For now, we'll just leave the PID for the roll system. So the last thing we need to do is just the mainframe, just the actual AI of the craft. And it's really simple. It's just like creating a regular ship in this regard. So all we want is we want the naval AI. There we go. Always make sure to disable reverse in a sub. It's less important with this type of sub, but if you use hydrofoils, allowing it to reverse can make you just have all sorts of problems. Um, the depth requirement, I'm going to say... Staying in waters with a greater depth of 20. In fact, 30. Because we are staying at about 20, we want some space below us. You can use control blocks to detect if there are things nearby and then cause you to simply surface or not, but that's more of a complex thing, really. And then just the usual gubbins. I would like all of these things. Thank you very much. And there's our AI sorted. That is literally it for the most basic. Although normally with, sub with subs, you do want to stay quite far away. So I'd say minimum distance, maybe a little bit higher and just up the broadside. But that's up to you. That's completely down to what type of craft you're building. So the last thing we need to do is the ability so it can move forwards and turn. And once again, the mass is between two blocks. So for the sake of ease of use, we're just gonna add propellers there and there. Am I correct with that? Yes, I am. And these will be our forward propulsion. Let's just turn off that for a second. So this will allow us to simply move forwards. I would always recommend, though, going with the huge version if possible. This is just because it's easier to see what's going on. Now, for turning, all you need to do is put them on the side. Once again, with the center of mass, so that would actually be a little bit annoying with how I've done this. So what I'm going to do is put them here so they're not in the way. And just like the other propellers, if they're on the back, make sure they are in thruster reverse mode. If they are not it will simply try and activate them the opposite of how it should work. In the front, however, they can just be placed down and forgotten about. And this now, in theory, should be able to move and go into combat just like you want it to, although, of course, it doesn't have any weapons, so I wouldn't really recommend this going into combat. Oh 
So fleet move, we are here. Oh, and currently we are in air form, so water please. Thank you. So uh, let's go this way instead. Let's be annoying for it. So now it should be turning left, which it is. And it is very slightly rising. So that is something to be considered about. Sorry, something to be concerned about. Everything is in place for it to work. It is trying to stabilize, but clearly the pitch controls are not strong enough. And that's most likely because of this backwards thrust. This is clearly pushing us forwards, and the reason is drag. We have horrible drag, which is causing the issue. But this can be fixed by simply making our pitch a lot more aggressive. So, motor drive on 10. Before it was on zero. So now, yet the pitch is no longer the issue, only the roll is an issue now, which can be fixed by simply adding more propellers or making the PID more aggressive, or adding those spin blocks, as I stated earlier. Any of those will get that job done. It's all about fine-tuning once you have it all sorted, and again, I would recommend more systems than just that. I have been doing this quite quickly. I basically had one hour to record this, so I do apologize if I have um, skimped on any little bits here and there. And there we go. Now, it, now it's actually too aggressive. Now both the roll and the pitch are so aggressive, it horribly, horribly rocks. But you get the idea. It now stays at minus 20-ish. And it's able to turn just fine. Let's do a quick turn now just to prove that. There we go. Ah, so it looks like it's the turning thrust that's actually causing the issues. And that's because... Oh, yeah, I've done it wrong. There we go. So there's the mistake. So it should be here and here, not here and here. So all I need to do is alter that, and normally I would actually edit that out and only show you the correct way of doing it, but I think it's better to show mistakes and how to fix them. So what happened was, I, instead of putting them on both sides of the mass, because we are in between a block, I've actually put one half a block above and then one, one and a half below, which means it's more favoring that movement, which of course pushes it upwards. So now we've altered that. When it turns, it should no longer have that pitch issue. And it doesn't. There we go. Let's just prove that by turning again. Yep, no more forcing the pitch, and it's solved. It's ugly, but you know what? It works, and it has, a, and it has quite a few redundant systems. Once you start armoring it up properly, you can make it truly redundant and truly powerful in order to make it a lot more survivable. When it comes to subs, their greatest two strengths are A, they are very difficult to detect with the current detection system. Um, the current detection system, system, I was going to say there, which of course is all of this. And please bear in mind, being underwater, a lot of these won't work. That's why things like missiles and torpedoes are really good, but if you really want to make sure you can see above the water, things like the missile sonar and missile radar boys attached to missiles are fantastic, and of course getting some of the detection from your other ships is also really, really good. But yeah, that's it. So we've now made a sub. A really basic one in far less than an hour, and that's with me recording. So if you weren't recording and you're just doing this, I'm hoping I made a little bit of difference. If I did help you, please tell me. And if you have any questions, I will, of course, try to answer them as much as possible. So with that, I'm afraid I really am all out of time for today's video. If you have enjoyed or you found it useful, then, of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and, most importantly, shows that from the depths, and especially from the depths tutorials, are videos you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you so, so much for watching. And I hope I helped someone. Thank you, and goodbye.